eternally grateful for our relationship with Barry. And um, when when Barry was told he had less than 24 hours to live. Well, when they said go home and get your affairs in order, you're not going to live through the weekend. Isn't that right, Barry? So. But I... But he contacted us right away, and we had the, the the privilege to join with him and to stand with him and hold his arms up during this time and to pray, and we did that faithfully, and we would walk our prayer path, and we would pray for him, and, and uh, what did you say, baby? Oh, yeah, we would send him emails, and, and it's like I was telling him, Javan was so involved in this. Javan every day would write him a dissertation. He, really encouraging, putting the word. I mean, he just, every, every single day for a while, he was sending that to him. And But it just, you know, it, it is such a blessing and an honor to be able to stand in the gap with others. The Bible says, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of God, or the love of God. And as we would stand, and then he would say, okay, this is happening now. And we would pray, and okay, this is happening now. And then he'd, t- he'd send back the results of what was going on. And, and you know, there's something to be said about praying in specifics. You know, and what you confess and speak with your mouth, you call it forth, and it will come to pass. So it's important to learn to do that, because the power of your words. Man, Charles Cass, if you ever read his books, uh, Power of the Confession, or what is the name of that book? Anyway, it it talks about when you pray those specific prayers, not in generalities. Man, I tell you what, I think one reason the Lord wants us to do that is because then he gets all the glory. Man, you start speaking that forth, and it happens just like you prayed it and believed God. Oh, my goodness. It makes all the difference in the world. So I want to just share today, just prepare your heart to receive and he's going to speak some things into your heart today. And then you take that home, those nuggets, those treasures, and begin to speak those things into your life and watch the victory that you're going to be walking in and the victory that you're going to have and the miraculous life that you will live. There's nothing in the world like it. Amen. So what an honor and a privilege. Um, let's give it up for Barry Bennett. Come on up. Barry. Let's welcome him big time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Good morning. Praise God. It's always a treat and a privilege and honor for me to be here and uh, get to share with you and get to spend time at the best hotel in Atlanta, uh, <laughs> Van and Regina's house, and uh, have such a good time there. And we, we eat pretty well. That's good. This trip is already blessed. I had key lime pie last night. So that's, uh, that's the anointing. But... Uh, <laughs> Amen. I, I really appreciate all of you that are here and uh, those that are watching online. Praise God. I, I really want to uh, share God's heart with you this morning and things that God has been doing in my life. And our sister, uh, Deborah, got up and gave my key scripture and half my message. And, uh, <laughs> And then Sister Vicky got up and read some of my favorite goodness of God verses. And they've already prepared you for an offering. So really, there's only the closing prayer left. <laughs> so I'm just going to pray we're going to go home. But... No, I, I do have some things on my heart to add to every good thing that's been happening here already. But uh God has been dealing with me, and, and I'm not sure how I'm going to share all this, and some of this I'll, I'll hold on to for the healing service, but in the last few years, God has really been changing my life. It's been a change that's been perceptible, that's been tangible, not just to me, but to those that uh, are sit under my ministry that are at Karis and those that have known me for a while. They, they say, Barry, you're different. What, what has happened to you? And... Uh, I mean, a lot has happened to me, but part of it, a big part of it is getting to know God better, if that makes sense. And this, in November, I will be walking with God 52 years. Uh, I got uh, got born again when I was 20, and believe it or not, I'm 72, so that's pretty cool. One's supposed to be 68, but I've made it to 72, so that's fun. 
And um, I feel like I've just recently got a clue <laughs> of what God is all about after all of these years. And I am enjoying my relationship with God. I even have a message called that, Do You Enjoy God? Uh, I find many Christians don't, but I am enjoying my relationship with God more than I thought was even legal. Uh, you know, it shouldn't be this much fun, but it has become this much fun, and it has become a blessing. And I find that the more that I enjoy God, the more that transmits as I minister. And people begin to sense this isn't just about being religious. It's not just about going to church and doing those kinds of things, but it's about walking and talking with God. Did you know that that was God's intention from the beginning? To walk and talk with Adam and Eve, and I'm sure all of their children and on down to, to us, had there been no sin, we would be walking and talking with God, and we, sh we should be. We're born again. He lives in us. Amen? So there should be something uh, tangible, dynamic, something real, in our walk with God that transcends the religion that we're accustomed to in our culture. And I'm probably going to take my hammer out and hammer on religion a little bit here in a minute. Uh, and I'm, <laughs> I'm not against anybody. I really am not. But I have experienced something that is so much better. And uh, a lot of you have too. And if you haven't, hang on. We're going to try and get you there. Amen. I want to go to John chapter 6. And this is the story of one of the stories of the loaves and the fishes. And how many of you have ever been reading along and you, and you read a verse and all of a sudden it comes alive? You may have read it 500 times, but all of a sudden, well, this happened to me in this, in this particular passage. We're dealing with loaves and fishes. We're dealing with apparent lack, a huge multitude of people, and how Jesus is going to handle this situation. And so he, this miracle begins to happen. I have another message where I talk about three keys to abundance, and one is being thankful for what you have. Second point, use what you have. Third point, bless what you have. That's a great message, too. Uh, and so we're, we're in that process. And we get to John 6, verse 11, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks... He distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down. And then this is the part that jumped off the page. Well, not this next one. Likewise of the fish. That didn't jump off the page. But this, this last part, as much as they wanted. And I, don't, I can't make that come alive for you like that came alive for me, but it jumped off the page as much as they wanted. And I thought, that doesn't sound too churchy. That doesn't sound religious. That doesn't sound like me. Uh, I remember when I was, uh, when we were missionaries, and we went through some very severely poor years as missionaries, and we had our three kids, and so uh, as much as we wanted was never in our vocabulary. And I remember if I would happen to get a chocolate bar or something for the kids, and, and I have uh, two boys and a girl, and so I can remember at one point I had this chocolate bar, and I have these two boys, I guess, I don't know where my daughter was, but uh, I said, okay, one of you gets to cut it in half, and the other one gets to choose which half they want first. Well, at that point, my oldest son, David, becomes a civil engineer, and he gets out all of his measuring equipment and everything he can. That thing's going to be, that's going to be cut in half. I mean, half-half. And so... <laughs> And then Daniel, my second son, gets to, to pick his half first. And so there's this, and I'm thinking, that was my mindset of uh, not, and not as much as you want, as, as much as we can get out of, a, of one bar. Is, you know, These people were eating so much. Now, the other versions say, and they were all filled. That's okay. They were all satisfied. That's okay. But this one got me as much as they wanted. It was left up to them. They could stuff themselves. They could gorge themselves. And it's falling out of their mouths onto the ground. And they pick up 12 baskets full when it's over. And I'm thinking, what is, what's going on here? Does Jesus know about this? Does he, does he realize, <laughs> does he realize this, this waste, this gluttony, as much as they want? You know, and I, I'm thinking, I used to be the dean of students at, at Karis for a number of years, and i I didn't have this kind of attitude. 
I was the handbook guy, the rule guy, you know, don't have who's having fun. We got to put a stop to that, you know. And <laughs> Jesus is not putting a stop to this. He's not saying, you guys, this is miracle fish, miracle bread. Come on, slow down. No, as much as you want. And when I saw this, I thought, have I been living my life wrong for 40 plus years, 50 years? I, I've had a wrong attitude. And I started to, to go back in my, my own personal history and think about uh, my background. My parents were both uh, raised during the Depression. And then from the Depression right into World War II, my dad was in World War II. And so everything was rationing. Back then, depression was was horrible time for the country. World War II, a lot of rationing. A lot of us don't have a clue what, what I'm even talking about, perhaps, in this room. And then when I was when I was born, uh, I was raised in with my parents having that mindset. How many of you have had your parents tell you, "Shut the door, the air conditioner is on, turn off the light when you leave the room," you know, and things that we don't think about as much today, perhaps. Uh, you know, make sure you eat it all. What about those poor starving kids in India? You know. <laughs> And so that was, I was raised in that environment of don't waste a thing because they're depression era people and that's how they had to live. And so my allowance when I was small, my allowance was 25 cents a week. When I got perhaps to junior high, it went up to 50 cents a week. This is why I struggled with, struggled with money my first years as an adult. I never learned how to manage money. You can't manage 25 cents. There's nothing to manage, okay? When I was uh, probably in junior high, I, had, I would get uh, Boys, what, what magazine? Boys Life magazine. And on the back one of one issue was a picture of this Stingray bicycle. How many know what a Stingray bicycle is? It had the high handlebars and the banana seat, okay? And uh, it was 50 bucks. And I thought, man, if I could get that. And then I look at my allowance and I thought, Maybe by the time I'm in college, I can, you know, I can afford that bicycle, but it's going to be too late then. That's not a good look when you're in college. So I couldn't manage money, so I had this poverty mindset. Anyone familiar with Romans 12 too? It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I was being conformed to the world, didn't even know it. Because my parents had been conformed to the Depression, then they had been conformed to World War II, and now they're conforming me to that mindset to where 25 cents a week, I should be grateful for that. Later it got up to 50, wow. And I'm supposed to learn how to manage money. And they weren't, they weren't active in the church, they weren't givers, so to speak. And so I didn't even learn about honoring God. That wasn't part of it. And so I'm in this mindset, and then I go to college, and in my senior year of college, I was invited to leave college, by the college. And, uh, and so my parents made it abundantly clear that now my opportunities in life were severely reduced, and I had that mindset now that I can only reach this level because I'm no, I don't have a degree, so that there's, there's my plateau right there, can't get up here. So I'm dealing with that. And then I go on the mission field where everybody knows missionaries are poor. That's just, you sign up for it. You sign, when you sign on to be a missionary, you sign, I shall be poor. You know, that's kind of the, the, the theology of, of missions, sadly, in the church. And so I was willing to accept that because God put a call in my life. And so off we go to the mission field. And now we're cutting candy bars in half uh, with my kids. And so this whole concept of as much as they wanted did not sound very religious to me, didn't sound very churchy, it didn't sound right. And I thought, who's wrong here, Jesus or me? Jesus is providing this miracle food, and they're eating so much, it's falling on the ground. And I'm thinking, that's not how we do it at my house. You know, we, we as missionaries, we would eat what would fall on the ground. You know, we would, the five-second rule, you know. Uh, and so I thought, something's wrong with me. Something's wrong in my heart because I am missing this extravagance. This message is called the extravagance of God. And I needed this message. 
uh, a lot of church, this church seems to be pretty, pretty well rounded in the goodness of God and, and these kinds of things. But I needed this message. And I was praying about it. And I thought, do I, do I need to share this message here at this church? And I, people, people probably know a lot of this already. And, and the Lord keeps telling me, keep sharing this. They need it more than you think. They need it more than you think because the church is not demonstrating the extravagance of God to the degree we should because we have been conformed to a world of limitations, to a world of lack and a world of concern uh, about, well, what's coming next? Maybe I should hoard something. Maybe I should put something away. And, And so we have that going on. In our culture, basically we are working to earn everything. That's the way we're raised. We, we, if you want it, you earn it. You go out and get it, typically. And in the kingdom, it's not about earning anything. It's about the blessings and the goodness of God that you can believe for and receive. And I'm not saying you don't work. I'm saying that in your walk with God, you should be expecting. I like the word that they've been using this morning. I have messages on that the expectation of God doing exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think. And so this has been a process for me to break through. And I have been a good Christian for many, many years, but I still had a, without even knowing it, a poverty mindset. And I'm a giver. We're givers. But it wasn't an expectation of abundance of as much as I wanted. It was an expectation of, I hope this doesn't offend anybody. If I get blessed, does that make sense? Christians get very offended with other Christians if they think think they're getting too blessed. And so I was I was kind of in that thing. I don't want anyone to get offended if I get blessed. So let's keep this keep this kind of undercover here of God blessing me. I'm not sure how far I'm going to go in this message, but I may brag on God a little bit. And it's not it's not me. It's a breakthrough that the Holy Spirit has done in me. Praise God. So, we're talking about the extravagance of God. It says in Proverbs 23, Proverbs 23, verse 7, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. We use this verse a lot at Karis, and some people don't like it because they think it has a particular context. It does, but it's a principle that has an eternal context. As you think in your heart, so are you. I'm going to give you three areas that you need to think about thinking about. And the first one is what you think about God is going to shape your life. How you see God. If you see God as stingy, if you see God as angry, if you see God as trying to to teach you something through suffering, if you have a God that you never know what he's going to do, and if you have a God that is in control and everything that happens is God, and whatever your perception of God is, that is shaping your life. Even if you don't think there is a God, that is shaping your life. Your concept of God is shaping your life. And if you don't, if you don't see God as, as much as you want God, then you're, you're stealing from yourself. These are things that have been impacted in my own heart. So what you think about God is shaping your life as you think in your heart about him, as you think in your heart about you. Second thing, what do you think about you? And if you're just an unworthy sinner saved by grace and just hanging on, that's a very destructive thought. You were a sinner, but you've been saved by grace. And now you're a new creation. Now you're the righteousness of God in Christ. Now you're seated with him in heavenly places. Amen? Now you're called to reign in life, Romans 5, 17. Not be a victim, but to be a victor in life. But if you don't have that inner thought about yourself, I really challenged the students yesterday. I don't know how many are here now, but... Uh, I said, where, where Jesus says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. And then I take you to Galatians 2.20, where it says, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Now project that into John 10.10, 10, and you say, I have come that they might have life and might have it more abundantly. And that, that gets people freaked out. No, I'm not Jesus, but he lives in you. Amen. I'll say it right now. I am here that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. All right? If that scares you, you're here to give me life more abundantly. We are here to interchange life, the good things that God is doing in us. 
And so, but do you see yourself that way? How do you see God? How do you see yourself? And then finally, how do you see circumstances? Are they mountains you have to climb or mountains you can speak to? Is, is everything impossible? Say, well, brother, you just don't understand the, the politics, the economy. The... Jesus gave these promises under Roman occupation. It didn't stop him. I mean, a lot of the Jews were slaves. There was taxation. There was incredible economic hardship. And he was still talking about pressed down, shaken together, running over. He didn't care about the Romans. So what are we afraid of? How do you see circumstances? You've got somebody on board back there. Amen. <laughs> How do you see circumstances? And I find that I had been conformed to the depression, World War II, missionary, lack of education mindset. And I had set up limits for me because I felt like this is what I deserve. This is as far as I can go. This is my level right here. Other people are up here, God bless them, but I'm down here because of all of these things I had allowed to shape me, conform me in this world. And so when I see this verse, they ate as much as they wanted, I think that's just not right. That's not, that can't, that's not right. So I want to show you some more verses. All right? You, you guys buckled up, ready to go? Okay. Let's go to Psalm uh, 6511. Psalm 65, 11 says, You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths drip with abundance. Now, when I read scripture, I, I try to see it. I'll make a movie out of a lot of things in my heart. My movies are way better than Hollywood movies, especially my Bible movies. Uh, and I, I will take time to see things that are taking place in scripture, in my imagination, in my heart. This one, this one challenges me. I did a study on the paths of God. I may have shared this with you last year. And the, the paths of God are like the freeways of Atlanta, okay? They all go somewhere, I think. I don't know. <laughs> we got stuck in one this morning. But uh, <clears throat> the paths of God are, are the paths of God's ways versus the paths of the unrighteous, the paths of the harlot, the paths. There's all kinds of paths in the Bible. <clears throat> the paths of God drip Amen. with abundance. Amen. Now, I have trouble seeing that. Now, Van and Regina have a prayer path. I don't know if it drips. <laughs> Last time I was on it, I ran into a cobweb. I think I shared that. In... <laughs> and I thought, somebody's going to think I'm out here really doing spiritual warfare. But it... <laughs> Actually, I'm afraid there's a spider in my hair, you know. But the paths of God drip with abundance, or where God is, there is no lack. And I know I've shared some of these things with you before, but I don't know who's here and who's not, and it doesn't matter. I like sharing it. But about five years ago, I had a revelation. I won't call it a vision. I had a revelation of heaven. I had been studying heaven scriptures for quite a while. And one night I had a revelation of heaven, and what I saw in my spirit was someone living without any care, total freedom, total peace, total joy, every need met now and forever, which gives you total freedom and peace and joy because there are no needs and you can, you can just enjoy life. And as I saw that in my spirit, I said, Lord, I want that. And the Lord said to me, Barry, you can live that way now. I can. Yeah, what's keeping me from having total joy and total peace and total love and total freedom and total everything and, and no fear of, of my needs? What's keeping me from that? Me. How I see God. How I see me. And how I see circumstances. Those are the three areas that are keeping me from walking in the extravagance of God. God's not keeping me from his extravagance. His paths drip with abundance. What path am I on? And if I'm on this self-limitation path of having to earn it and setting the ceiling because, well, my education this and, and my background this and this and this, and therefore this is my comfort zone right here. And God is trying to take me and is taking me actively through breaking those ceilings, those levels, and taking me into a different dimension where I can have as much as I want. 
got very quiet. And I'm not necessarily talking about stuff. I can have as much joy as I want. I can have as much peace as I want. I can have as much of God's love as I want. I can have as much healing as I want. We'll talk about healing a little later today. There is no lack for whatever you've gone through and whatever you need. And you think you may have to earn it or you haven't been good enough or I don't know if I deserve this. And we go through all this guilt and condemnation. No, there is as much as you want. Well, no, I don't want to do that. It's got to be it's got to be up to God. God has left it up to you. How much do you want? How much peace do you want? How much love do you want? How much healing do you want? How much do you want? It's all there. That's called grace. That's the grace message. It's all been provided. But we have been conformed to either the world or the religious world. And religion will tell you all of this is heresy. Religion will tell you, no, you just sit back and just whatever will be, will be, and God is in control, and you just got to deal with the little bits that you've got, and, and, and you know, we'll pray for you, but who knows? That's religion. I've had it with religion. I'm done with religion. I am walking in a different level of freedom and joy, and that's what people see in me now. Say, Barry, you're different. What happened? I got free. I got free. How many of you are familiar with the New Gospel Truth Network of Andrew Womack Ministries? Okay. And there's a, it's called GTN. And I guess who has a TV show? I have a daily TV show on the network. And the title of my show wasn't even, I didn't even pick it. Elizabeth Murin picked it and she said, do you like this? It's called Free Indeed. And I said, I can work with that. I can work with that. I can get anything in there. And so I, I am loving this freedom because I am getting to taste and see the Lord is good, and I'm getting to taste again and taste again. In fact, I'm getting to taste as much as I want of how good God is. His paths drip with abundance. Now, I don't know if, I'm, if this is redundant for you, but this is life-changing for me because I look back and I see the compartments I had allowed myself to be put in and the limitations I had allowed in my life and the, therefore limiting my own expression of the, of the love of God to my family and to others. I was limiting because I felt limited. And then I read this verse and all of a sudden the lights come on. And then I keep going. His paths droop with abundance. Let's go again. Psalm 103, verse 4. Psalm 103, verse 4. Who redeems your life. From destruction. And not just that, he crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. I have heard many testimonies of people that have been in very unfortunate lifestyles and, and issues in life. And you may be here today with something that has been in your heart, that you've suffered something, you've you know, there's all kinds of abuse and trauma and relationship issues, and, or, or it can be sickness or it can be a poverty issue or whatever. There is more than enough for you to be redeemed from destruction and to be crowned with loving kindness and tender mercy. There is more than enough. You can have all you want. Didn't Jesus come to heal the brokenhearted? Luke 4.18, didn't he come to bind up the, the, the wounded and set the captive free? That's as much as you want. It's not just a little here. No, you're good. You're good to go. You can make it. No, as much as you want. And I know there are folks in here that are probably dealing with things that they're not quite healed from yet. There's more healing for, for you. Spirit, soul, and body, whatever you need is there as much as you want. And the religious mind says that just sounds greedy. But that's why I'm not religious anymore. Yeah. It's not greed. It's growth. Yeah. It's, it's the will of God for you. Yeah. God gets glory when you do well. God yeah. gets glory when you are full with joy. God gets glory when you have peace and more than enough to spare. And you can begin yeah. giving to people and ministering to people because you are so transformed. You have so much, you don't know what to do with it. So you're getting basketfuls to give to other people. Yeah. That's the will of God. 
That's the will of God. And th this, is, this is real. This is what's been going on inside of me. And somehow I'm trying to transmit this to you. Let's go to Psalm 16, 11. No, Psalm 36, 8. Psalm 36, 8. It says they are abundantly satisfied, abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. And I saw that and I thought, that's not even a church word. <laughs> we talk against that kind of thing, you know, pleasures, come on now. <laughs> he gives us to drink from the river of his pleasures, which means that God has a river full of pleasures. Amen. Not in our church. Well, I know, that's why I don't go to your church, okay? <laughs> your, your old church, not this one. That's right. Okay, amen. This, but his pleasures... He gives us to drink from the river of his pleasure. See, I, this is mind-expanding, mind-blowing for, for my generation. Getting our minds blown to the goodness of God. Give us to drink from the river of your pleasures. Is, is, does God have lack? Does God, it's just a little bit here and just watch that candy bar. Cut that candy bar right now. That was me. And I couldn't afford more because I didn't believe I should afford more. I'm a missionary. I'm supposed to be poor. We're just going to suck it up and do this and for the glory of God. God wasn't getting any glory out of my poverty. No. My family sure wasn't. Psalm 1611. Psalm 1611 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, oh, here's this word again, are pleasures forevermore. They're in a river and they're at his right hand, <laughs> okay? Make a movie out of it. What, is it. what are we talking about here? God wants to bless you. He wants you blessed. He doesn't want you religious and sourpuss face and always complaining <laughs> and just barely getting by and being happy with just enough. You know, we lived in, and I'm not trying to put any Chilenos in here. I want to... I, I love Chile. We lived there for 12, over 12 years. But there are certain groups within that society that have a very small concept of life. And so in Spanish, everything that's small is ito or ita. Uh, and so if they are going to have tea or tea time, they'll have a tecito, small tea, with their pancito, small bread. And they live in their casita, their, their little house, and if they're fortunate enough to have a car, it's an altito. It's a small car. All right. Everything is ito, ita in, in Spanish. And it's, it's a mindset of we just, we just want enough to get by. Well, you have that privilege. You can make that choice. But how do you bless anybody else? How do you support orphanages? How do you build hospitals? How do you build churches? How do you send missionaries? How do you do anything if all you have is your pancito and your tecito? But that's a mindset that's being conformed to this world, to where I, I have, um, praise God, have broken through this. And as we haven't been poverty stricken for quite some time, but there was still a level on what I thought I deserved. I had still the world concept of I have to earn it. I have to prove myself. And that was not God. That was me. That was self-inflicted poverty. Of, of levels of me not understanding that God's heart is pressed down, shaken together, running over. My heart is, can I have a little bit more, please? What's that play called? Is it Oliver Twist or sent that story? A yeah. little bit more porridge, please. That's, that's the, the church mindset is you've got enough to survive. Just be happy with what you've got. And God is... What's going on with my church? I am willing to do pressed down, shaken together, running over, and Jesus made that promise under Roman occupation. Don't talk to me about politics. When, when people talk to me, Barry, I, I hear what you're saying, but what about this country where everybody's poor? What about this situation? What about all the crime? All you're doing is telling me what the devil has done. Why are you telling me what the devil has done? Do you think God made everybody poor? Do you think God is causing all that suffering? Is that the God perception you have? No, my God is extravagant. And how can I help those situations if I still have a poverty mentality in my own heart? 
I can't do anything for that. But praise God, we are, we are big givers. We are big givers. Yes, we are. But it took time for me to break through my own limitations of seeing God as wanting me limited. God doesn't want me limited. Doesn't it say in Ephesians 3.20, he was able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask or think or above what we ask or think. And I can ask or think a lot. But then it goes on to say, according to the power that works in us. Well, the part of this power is you believing it's even possible. And that it is actually God's will for his, your paths to drip with abundance. Because if you're walking his path, you're, on, you're in the abundance. God is extravagant, but we, I haven't been taught that in church. In all the churches I've been in and many around the world and my own as, as a young boy and all the things I've seen, I've never heard this, never heard this, that God wants you blessed. He wants you dripping with abundance. He wants you to have exceedingly abundantly. He wants to do press down, shaken yeah. together. And I'm not just talking about stuff. I'm talking about your happiness. I'm talking about your freedom, I'm talking about your joy. I'm talking about your peace. Why not? Amen. I won't ask for a show of hands, but if I say how many would like to have the supernatural peace of God, probably I'm going to get some hands because you aren't having it right now or you wouldn't raise your hand. So why not? Why aren't you in the supernatural peace of God? Well, I didn't even know that was available. There's the problem. No one has taught these things in most of the traditional churches. We're not getting this message. We're being told to just shut up and be quiet and, and do with what you've got. And that isn't the gospel. Did you know in Romans 15, 29, Romans 15, 29, Paul says, I, I am coming to you, I'm paraphrasing, in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. I don't know, is it up here? Romans 15, 29, the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Christ. What does that mean? Well, it means there's like, the gospel is full of blessings, full of blessings. God is more extravagant than you've even comprehended, that I've comprehended. Can you imagine heaven? I, I like to sit and imagine heaven, especially since I had a small revelation of it, where there is no lack, complete, total abundance at all times. Do you know what hinders love on the human level? Because love gives, for God so loved the world that he gave the very best that he had. What hinders us from giving the very best that we have? Well, I'll give you two things. Fear, number one. Poverty, number two. When you're stuck, struck down with poverty, you can't express the, the God kind of love because you're limited. That's why poverty is of the devil. We have got to get past these, these limitations. Yes, we need jobs. I have a job, but I'm not limited to seeing God as only able to bless me through my job. And so there are other things going on in my life where other blessings come, unexpected blessings, things I haven't worked for, things I haven't earned. And I've come to the place where now I expect them. My expectation or my expectation meter, what do you call that? Expectometer <laughs> is, is over on way high. I'm expecting blessings now because I've gotten over myself. I've gotten over my own self-condemnation, my own feelings of inferiority. I've gotten over all that kind of timidity, that, who I used to be, literally. I've gotten over all of that and I'm over into a different dimension and I find that I'm kind of alone. Because not everybody's willing to go this far. But I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you. God is bigger than you think, better than you think, and as much as you want is available. It's on the table. And I'm talking mental healing, soulish healing, whatever you need, trauma healing, or resources. Whatever. It's all on the table. It's all available. How are you all doing? Luke 6.38, I've already quoted, given it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Running over will be put into your bosom. Praise God. Ephesians 3.20, I've quoted, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, and part of that power is going to be you getting your mind renewed to the fact this is even possible. That's good. 
This is, this is where the breakthrough is needed. Do you believe God is that good? But brother, I don't have the education. Neither do I. I got kicked out of college. Now a TV show. All right. <laughs> Amen. But brother this, but brother that, but brother the other. Oh, brother, stop it with the brother. Don't come up with excuses. Well, if you only knew. No, I don't need to know. You need to know God. You need to know God. Some of the greatest testimonies in the world of people uh, that had the, the least to work with, naturally speaking, have done the most for the kingdom because they believed God. That God was able to do more than they could ask or think. You just believe God. But I just said, my job only pays me. You, what about, who cares? What's that got to do with anything? We have too many hourly workers in the kingdom. And I'm not talking about your job. I'm talking about the way you see God. You're on an hourly wage with God. Now, he didn't put you on that. You did. Wow. Second Corinthians 9.8. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things. Did anybody hear the word all? Okay. In all things may have an abundance for every good work. How can the gospel go out if we're as poor as the people we're trying to reach? God is able to make all grace abound to you, all provision. Now, a good definition of grace is provision. Everything you could possibly need to be a blessing because who gets the glory when you're a blessing? God does. Who gets the glory when you're full of joy? God does. Who gets the glory when you're full of peace? God does. Who gets the glory when you get healed from your past? God gets the glory. Who gets the glory when you get healed in your body? God gets the glory. Why do we want to take glory from God and, and mope and, and complain about, well, if you only knew? Stop it. If you only knew God, you wouldn't be talking like that. Amen. 2 Corinthians 9, 11, a few verses later, it says, while you are enriched in everything. Well, that's not a Bible word. Yeah, they're, they're, it's right there in the Bible. Enriched in how much? Everything. everything for all liberality. Anybody here want to be enriched in everything? Amen. I do. I do because there's more stuff I want to do. Amen. There is more stuff I want to do. And I'm telling you, when, once you break through, and I had to have the breakthrough. I had to see it before I saw it. When I had the breakthrough in these areas, and it started a few years ago during my, my cancer thing, when I got the breakthrough, I, I took the limits off my wife. <laughs> I have a very happy wife now. I took the limits off my wife. I took the limits off of me. I, I said, Hun, just do what you, just whatever. Do it. And she's not crazy, but all of a sudden, the limits I had put on her for so many years, I just said, go for it. So I'm gone this weekend, and she's going for it. <laughs> I don't care because I've discovered that no matter what she does, God blesses me back more. I was, I was driving home. I, she had been wanting a new car for a couple of years. You know, I've been praying about this for a couple of years. Car, a car takes two or three years of prayer. And, <laughs> and I, was, I was driving home one night from work and praying about this car. I really would like to get her a car, you know, and just, but I need to pray about this probably a couple more years. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and said, Barry, now. And I knew what he meant, but I said, huh? I said, huh? And get thee behind me. So, <laughs> I said, now. Now? Now. So I got home. I said, honey, we're going to go to the car place Saturday. And we're going to buy you a car. What? Yeah. But what about, no, I'm going to do it. God said now. Well, they don't sell cars like they used to. So it took several weeks to get it. But anyway, we bought the car. And happy wife, happy life. Amen. But here's the cool thing. That was, a, that was a chunk of money. All right. I just bought a car in August. I bought hers last November. We both now have 2024 cars paid for. 
I'm not making any more money. No, I mean, God is just replenishing because I took the limits off of her. I took the limits off of me. We've become far more free in our giving to our kids, our grandkids. Uh, we had a situation where I was helping somebody and to the tune of $30,000 that I had not budgeted in. Uh, and it's all replenished. I'm thinking, where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? It's not coming from Karis. They're not, we want to give Barry more. No, that's not, <laughs> that's not what's happening. <laughs> I'm not traveling and making huge offerings. I'm not doing that kind of thing. I am doing a TV show. I am working. And yet God keeps blessing. Yeah. Why? Because I saw it before I saw it. Yeah. As much as I want. As much as I want. Did I, did I share too much? No. Because uh, I don't want this to sound like... <laughs> she gave me three hours, so I'm... I just see the body of Christ needs a breakthrough because we're still working hourly for God and only what we think we deserve. And I'm telling you, there's another side to this where there is pressed down, shaken together, running over grace for you, every, anything you need, spirit, soul, body, economically, physically, emotionally, there's more than enough. Let me, I, I, don't, I don't want to abuse time here. So I want to share with you kind of my new life message about how to prosper. And I want to take you to Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. And it says, and we should all be familiar with this, but blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That We could break that down and do messages right there, but just stay away from the darkness, stay away from the critics, stay away from the, all the cynicism and all the, all the lies and the, the sin of the world. Just stay away from it. If you want to prosper, now if you don't want to prosper, you can stay there. But if you want to prosper, yeah. all right? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Okay, let's take that over to the New Testament. His delight is in the grace of God, the promises of God, righteousness by faith, and all the things of the kingdom. That's where your delight should be. Okay? And in his law, all those things I just said, he meditates how often? Day and night. This is a big part of what I'm talking about. I don't just visit this subject now and then. I'm in this subject all the time. I am meditating on the verses I've shared with you and many other verses of the goodness of God, of the blessings of God, of the favor of God, of the abundance of God. I have them on my iPad. I read them all the time because I find the world will try to steal that seed. The cares of this world will try to choke that word. So I've got to stay alive to it all the time because I'm walking in this with it. And then no one comes with me. Fine. I'm going this direction. I'm doing this. All right. He shall be like a tree. If you do these things, you shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit in season whose leaf shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. Now, let me explain what this means, because the world is based on competition. The world is based on trying to get ahead of somebody, trying to step on somebody to get somewhere, trying to get a small slice of a small pie. The world is a competitive place. I get it, but not the kingdom. Not the kingdom. What's the secret of prosperity in the kingdom? Growth. Not competition. Growth. As much as you want is on the tree of growth. It's not in the comp competition for the pie. Is this making any sense? I have looked back over my life and I see I've never been competitive in, in I was a competitive swimmer and I played basketball. I have competition in me in that sense but not in the realm of my life compared to other people's lives. I'm not competing. I've only wanted to grow. And the more I've grown, the more I've prospered. And the more I've grown in the things of God, the more people come to my tree to eat. And I don't even have, I have five books now published that are on Amazon. If you want my, I don't bring books anymore. I've simplified my life, but uh, if you want my books, Amazon handles my books, okay? You just type in my name and there's five books right there and they're good books. I did not try to do that. Harrison House came to me, came to my office and asked me to write books. 
I didn't seek that out. That came to me. I didn't seek a TV show. They came to me. I haven't sought anything that I've done. I just grow. And as I grow, things come to me. And I'm thinking, there's a secret here. I know other ministers, they're all about competing, comparing, and trying to get ahead and build this and do that and do the other. Not me. I just want to grow. Because I know if I grow, I'll prosper. And I'll have something to give people. It's as much as you want, but it's in the rivers of water. It's in the rivers of water. If you will grow in your relationship with God, if you will grow in your love for God, if you will grow in hearing God, you'll do very well. Whatever happens in the world of politics, it doesn't matter. Whatever happens in the world of the economy, it doesn't matter. If you will grow, you will prosper. You will have more joy than you can handle. You'll have more freedom, more peace, more love. You'll have more healing for your mind and your soul. You'll have healing for your body, and you'll have you'll be enriched in everything for all liberality if you'll grow. God is an extravagant God. Oh, praise God. It, isn't it nice to have a God that has more than enough for everyone in this room? There is more than enough. Eat as much as you want, and there's baskets full left over, and he's not freaking out like I would have the old berry. What's going on here? No, what's going on here is that people are getting the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. People are growing. Marriages are being saved and restored. Families are being restored. Promotions are coming if you'll just grow. People will find you if you grow. If you compete, you're you're shutting all your own doors. You might get ahead for a little bit, but you're going to lose it. But if you grow, you'll be noticed. God will make sure you're noticed. And any subject we could put into this, this message, it doesn't have to be just finances. That's, that's where God has been dealing with me the most is resources. But it's, it covers more than that. It covers spirit, soul, and body. If you'll just grow, you'll have more than enough. Amen. God is an extravagant God, and he wants to bless you. Would you stand with me? Amen. How many want to agree with me to step into a new dimension? Amen? All right. Praise God. Father, hallelujah. We want the veil of our heart, if there is one, to be removed, of our spiritual eyes to be removed, of our spiritual ears to be removed, so that we can see and hear and know how extravagant you are, how good you are, what a blessing you are and how you want us to prosper in every way. You want us to have more than enough because you get the glory, and we get to be a blessing. And I, Father, I speak, I don't know the hearts in this room, I don't know the history of everybody here, but you do. And some people here need a breakthrough right now. They need a breakthrough right now. They need to know your love right now. They need to know that you care right now. And Father, I just speak that now. And to those of you that are hurting, suffering in some way, feeling condemnation or guilt or traumatic pain, whatever, Jesus is more than enough right now. Just put it down and step over into a new new dimension of life. No guilt, no sorrow, total freedom, total peace, total love, no anxiety, no fear for tomorrow. Just be free. I just I want to speak that word again. Freedom to your heart right now. Freedom to your mind right now. Freedom to every part of your being. Freedom to your concept of God. Let it get bigger. Freedom to your concept of you. Christ in you. And then see circumstances as just the bumps in the road that are out there. But you are more than equipped. More than equipped. Praise God. I speak blessing over everyone in this room, not just God bless you, but a tangible revelation of the blessing of God on your life, the favor of God on your life. Favor can do more in five seconds than 20 years of labor. 
We have favor. Favor. We're not hourly workers for God. We are blessed. We are stepping into a new dimension of expectation. Our eyes are open. We are looking for people to bless. We are taking the limits off of ourselves and we are taking the limits off of God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just take a minute just to soak in this and just whatever it is in your heart that needs adjusting or whatever wall needs to come down, let it come down. Believe the word of God. Believe that he is doing exceedingly abundantly more than you could ask or think, but it's according to the power that works in you. Believe that he is pouring out on you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, that every good gift comes from him. Believe that the paths you walk on drip with abundance because you're walking on God's paths. You're seated with him in heavenly places and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Believe it. Begin to, to meditate in these scriptures. Begin to see them in your heart. Let them grow within you. Choose the spirit. Don't go back to the flesh. Just choose the spirit. That's where prosperity is. Choose love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and self-control and faith. Choose it. Grow and be blessed. Praise God. Father, once, once more I speak tangible blessing on every heart in this room. The blessing of God. And we praise you, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, um, I want you to sit down for a minute. Let me just share this. You know, that scripture, Psalm 65, 11, when it says, this is a year of goodness, his goodness, and your paths will drip with abundance. So here in 2024, you still have some weeks left. This is your year of goodness. So now what happens when you get into 25? That's also your year of goodness. That he has in your life. There's no expiration. Day no, the and then the next year will be the same thing. And your paths will drip with abundance. So you just have to believe it. That was excellent. And, you know, I tell you what, every year you just speak that over yourself. But you know how it begins? The Bible says by giving. Give and it will be given back to you. What? Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together and... Running over, God will give unto you. Men will give unto your bosoms, is what it says. God will cause men to give unto your bosoms. And the best way we have that we can show the Lord, we believe what was preached and given to us today. That's what we teach in this church all the time. You know, and as we give to this man of God and we sow into his life, do you know everywhere he goes? And he can go there without even leaving his office because it's going all over the world on Gospel Truth Network. So everything you sow into him and whatever he accomplishes, you know, the Bible says you give him a profit, you receive a profit's reward. Amen? I mean, so whatever he's being blessed with, you're being blessed with because you're sowing seed into his field. And that harvest will come back to you. So what we want to do is we want to bless Barry today. And Van's going to tell you how to go about doing that. Yeah. And you know what? It's awesome. I that was a great add, message. This is a twist that I add. I'm not trying to change scripture. I'm not no. saying that. I'm just like amplifying it right here where I say this a lot. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you ask or think according to the power that you allow, allow. to work in you. That's my twist on it. And I'm not creating a new Bible. I'm just saying we have to allow Amen. that power to work in us. We have to cooperate with that power. And if we do that, man, God's, I mean, it's, it's just like what Barry taught this whole teaching. It is, it is 
an untapped resource. I mean, people say they believe it or understand it and stuff, but it's not going on. But in here and today, Barry's been living it out. He's been, he's, he's, he's seen, like he said, two, a new car for Betty Kay, new car for him. And yet it's not, he's not in poverty city right now for doing that. That's not, a good word. He's not under, you know, years of, of payments that he's got to pay for the next 10 or 15 years. It's receiving that power because, because it's all knowing how much God loves us. A lot of times we say we know how much, but do we really know how much? We need to put him to the test. He said, go ahead and prove me. We put him to the test. But I tell you, giving is such a big part of it. And when Regina and I first got married, which was in 1980, I didn't know anything about giving. She did. She grew up in the church and everything. I didn't. And, and man, I tell you what, when I got that revelation, I tried to give everything we had away. Didn't it, babe? You did. She had to stop me. She said, no, 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 well, no. No, he was trying to make up for all the years yeah, he didn't give, up right? For, so he's cackling and all, trying to figure all yeah, that out. Yeah, for 20-something oh, no, no, no. years. <laughs> But anyway, you don't have to go back and do that. You just, you just start, start right, right where you are, right where you are. And giving has been just such a big part of our lives. And, you know, and guess what? Sowing has been, and so reaping, reaping. has been a big part of our lives. You life expect too. the harvest. Exactly. Call it in. We tell people that all the time. You know, and for those visitors who are here, and maybe you've come a long way, and maybe, maybe there's some of you that, that go to Karis. You know, we encourage you, if you don't have a church, even if you live an hour, hour and a half away from here, we have people that have been a part of our church for 10 years, a family up in Adairsville, an hour and a half away, and another family in Rome, Georgia, because we teach this. Right. And it's, and it's life and death where you go to church. Yeah, it is absolutely. worth the drive. So we encourage you, consider it. If you don't have a church you go to, we would love to have you join us. God is doing some amazing things here. So we encourage you, come and be a part of that. Um, if you are needing a church and it may not be as local as you wish it could be, but you know what? Hey, it's worth it. It's worth the drive. Absolutely. And we don't have a midweek service anymore because it got too much with the traffic here in Atlanta. So we do home Bible church in different places. I mean, we, we have a home Bible church in, um, in a lighthouse group up in Adairsville. I mean, we had it in Rome. We're going to, we're going to be spreading these all over the place because we've got to get the word out, yes. the truth of the gospel so that you can walk in abundance and you can walk in healing and you can, you know, it's always his will to heal. You know that come to healing service and you're going to hear more about that. It's just like Barry. They didn't give him any hope to live. None. I mean, that much. But God said, God said that he should live and not de die and declare the works of the Lord. And Sorry. here he is declaring the works of the Years Lord today. Yeah. So I'm telling you, y'all, getting the truth of the word is transforming. And that's what helps you walk in a prosperous life. But I'm going to tell you right now, it begins by giving. So let's give to Barry. Let's just do it over the top. Be a blessing today and watch it come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over that men will bring to you. Okay, Amen. if you go ahead Hallelujah. and put that template up on the screen behind me, please, so everybody can see that. All right, so you're, if you're writing a check, put your date up there, put to the Solid Rock of Atlanta, and then the four-column honorarium, Reverend Barry Bennett. That's all you have to put on there, and it'll it's, it'll go right to straight to Barry. And uh, but actually, as you write it to the Solid Rock of Atlanta, like we say, everything that comes in online – in fact, if you go online now to give too, you will see added on there, honorarium Reverend Barry Bennett down there, right below the on the drop down menu, right below tithes and offerings. So, if you want to give there, just put that go drop down to that Reverend uh, honorarium Reverend Bar Barry Bennett, and uh, give online. Or they have envelopes. Uh, ushers have envelopes in the aisles right now. You will need you will need a Solid Rock of Atlanta envelope if you're going to give and you want a record kept of that. So if you raise your hand, if you do that, but on the envelope, all you do there is just put um, to put a circle offering on there on the right hand side and put the same thing. Honorarium Reverend Barry Bennett, put your f full name, address, email, all the pertinent information on there. That's all you need to do. All of this goes through the Solid Rock of Atlanta. And we do this for every guest speaker and have done this for 20 something years. Same way. It works wonderfully. Anybody else need an envelope for a record of your cash giving? Please raise your hands up nice and high. 
All right. So then go ahead and um, if you have envelopes, you can bring those down now. If you Hallelujah. Have Thank completed. you, Jesus. Our, our checks, if you've written the checks, written it out to the Solid Rock of Atlanta and put for, for Reverend, um, Honorarium Reverend uh, Barry Bennett down. That'll be perfect on that, too. And uh, like I said, also a line. Let's go ahead and pray over this offering right now. Father, in Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the power to get wealth. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father. To establish your kingdom on this earth, Lord. It's not about us building our kingdom, Lord. Not about us building our kingdom at all, Lord. It's about us believing you and taking you at your word, Lord, that you are a lover of us. And you want to lavish us with, with blessings, Father. That you love us so much, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that as we sow bountifully, we reap bountifully, and there's no lack in our lives, Lord. And as we sow into Barry's a life, Lord Jesus, we know we're sowing in good ground, good, a good harvest coming forth, Lord, for each one of us, Lord. As Barry uh, gains more momentum as far as his own Gospel Truth Network and his TV show and the different opportunities you're affording him, Lord, in Woodland Park. And we just thank you, Father, that, he, that when he reaches people and he's touching people's hearts, we have a part to play in that, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. We give, Lord, not begrudgingly, because you love a cheerful giver, Lord. And we give because we're not, not out of compulsion, but we give because we trust you, and we give because we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, like I said, envelopes that are made out have cash in envelopes, checks that are made out to the Solid Rock of Atlanta and, and uh, uh Reverend, um, Honorary and Reverend uh, Barry Bennett on the four column checks. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Didn't you enjoy that today? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. We want our prayer ministers to be coming on down. We never want to end a service without making sure that uh, everybody knows Jesus and look, that they are also filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit is something you really want to have because that's where the power is. So um, we just want our prayer ministers, if you'll come on down as they uh, go ahead and collect up the rest of the offering. But if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Please come down, or if you are online and you are watching, you can call us at 404-697-5215, and we'll be happy to pray with you. Um, but, but anybody who is uh, needing Jesus, please come down, receive him as your Savior. Also, um, if you have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, y'all, I'm telling you what, man, when you plug into that power source, Oh my goodness, the things that can take place for you. So I encourage you, come down, let them pray with you, or if you have any other needs. Um, also, we encourage you to come back for healing school. Uh, I, we used to be calling school, now we call it service, healing service that will take place at two o'clock to two thirty. We encourage I'm sorry, 2 to 3.30. I, that would be, that'd be a real short one, 2 to 2.30. 2, two, uh, two to 3.30. That'd be a drive-by healer. Right <laughs> drive-by so, healer. Yeah. Uh, 2 to 3.30. Anyway, go get a bite of lunch, and then be sure and come back for that. It's going to be amazing. Barry has quite a testimony to share with you, and, and it'll be a source of encouragement for you to stand and believe God uh, for your own uh, transformation and healing in your body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All righty. We're going to go ahead and close in prayer. And um, in fact, before I do that real quick, Rodney, will you uh, say what you want to say to, uh, right now? With, with it? Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, pastors. Uh, we are planning for our men's gathering uh, this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in Peachtree City. And uh, we're so excited about what the Lord is going to do in all of our men's lives uh, through this conference. And I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that check-in will be between 3 o'clock and 6 p.m. on this Thursday at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Peachtree City, uh, Georgia. Okay, so 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, we're going to start with bowling and pizza on Thursday night. We're going to have six amazing teaching sessions on Friday and Saturday, six buffet meals. You all know the spiel by now. And uh, we're really excited about what the Lord is going to do. But again, 3 to 6 p.m. is our check-in time 
uh, on this Thursday. Thank you, Pastor. Buffet meals. So bunch of buffet meals. You have the like opportunity food. to buffet your body. That's what you do. <laughs> With oh, the word buff, and with, that's right, and your, spirit, buff and buff your spirit, and your spirit <laughs> with the with the word, <laughs> so you right. taste and see that right. he is good, and that's and right. also take care of your body at the same time. Exactly. That's, all right, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to gather here together this morning, Lord, in your name. Thank you, Father, for the word that came forth out of Barry Bennett, Lord, a powerful word, Lord, that sets people free, Lord, to show us. We have to constantly be reminded just how much you love us and how much you're not just doling out things to us, Lord. You're not, you don't have us on a string, Lord. You have, you're a lavish God. You bless your children. You take good care of your children, Lord. And we thank you so much for that knowledge and that revelation, Father. Thank you, Lord. It helps us uh, face life with a whole different perspective, Lord. A perspective, Lord, where we know daddy's to go take care of us. We know we're loved. We know we're appreciated. We know we're valued. We know we're protected. And we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for your word that never returns void, but accomplishes those things that it was sent forth to do, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord, for freedom, Lord. Freedom, Lord, to serve you, to love you, to be taken care of by you. We are kept children. We are kept children like a kept wife or a kept husband, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So any first-time visitors that want to know about our Lighthouse groups, Sheridan will be back there in the... Uh room in the hospitality room and she can share more with you about that please go get you some lunch and be back here for healing uh, service at two o'clock love you guys thank you so much and if you want to bring your food back here we have a hospitality room you can sit there at the tables and eat um and and uh we're going to say about the live stream but listen be sure y'all come back and feel free that the church is going to be open all afternoon. Yeah, all right. I want to tell everyone watching on live stream, wherever Thank you, you so are. Much. Thank you so much for joining us. Please be back. Tune in again next Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, U.S. time. All Have right. A also, Thank you. healing school will uh, healing service will be live streamed yeah, as well. We'll be, we'll we'll see be you doing then. healing uh, God live bless stream, you. stream too.